about building your online presence. Um, together with me, I have um, our director of EdTech, uh, Dr. Alicia Gallegos. She is here in the chat and she'll be hanging out with us for a little bit as well. And I also have my colleague, Carrie Lane, who uh, will be active moderating, actively moderating the chat. And if any questions you might have, she'll be either answering them, giving you the links, or kindly interrupting me to answer your questions as well, just in case I don't see those. And then we also have our, our administrative assistant, Sandra Walden. She is also here um, supporting and hosting our sessions as well. So again, if you have any questions or anything, you are more than welcome to put in the chat. And just one more disclaimer, we are recording um, this session. So if you would prefer not to be on video, uh, I would encourage you to turn off your camera here. Uh, you can actively participate in the chat though. And we will go ahead and begin. Uh, before we be go to the objectives, let me just give you a heads up on some upcoming events that we have going on. So a week from today, I will be hosting our first esports network meeting. Um, if you do not know what esports is, very simple. It is competitive video gaming that is used in the academic standard uh, with academic standards, um, social and emotional standards, and whatnot. It is an official CIF sport as well. Uh, so if you are interested in joining, uh, you're more than welcome to sign up for that. I'm visiting our link tree again. Uh, Carrie Lane is going to be putting that link in the chat, and uh, or if you have any colleagues or anyone that's a, a staff member or a counselor that loves video games and that's all they talk about at work, send them our way and we will help them and support them. Um, and after that, we do have on October first our Back to Basics Google Classroom from four to five p.m. So. It's one of these one-on-one -on -one sessions where we go back to the basics of just training of what it is and how to utilize it. And then on October 16th, uh, actually Carrie Lane's gonna be leading that one. It is empowering inclusive learning, leveraging ed tech to meet a UDL, Universal Design for Learning 3.0 guidelines. And that is also, uh, the, the link will also be in there to register. Um, it should be on our link tree as well or whatnot. And then the next Curious About session is gonna be on October 22nd. And that is going to be led by one of my colleagues, Pam Rabin. And she's going to be talking about quantum computing and artificial intelligence in EDU. And uh, that's going to be very intriguing. I, I know recently, um, subscribe. If you're EdTech, I would encourage you to subscribe to like the MIT Technology Review. Uh, they just released an article um, where Google's had some groundbreaking um, findings within the quantum computing. So I'm not going to go into that because that's not what today's session's about. But just in case you want a little preview of what's going on. All right, and I'm just going to double check to make sure that there's any questions. Great to see some of you here again. Thank you. All right, and let's go ahead and begin. All right, so here are our objectives, and that is... Oops, excuse me. Don't know what happened to my slides here. Okay. Awesome. All right. So our objectives is this, is uh, we're going to be talking about a comprehensive understanding Chris, of, yes. Chris, it's still in that one view of the, um, the note view. When you oh, did excuse it. me. Thank you. How are we doing now, everyone? That's You're good, Chris. All right. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Apologize for that. It's not an ed tech event without some technical difficulties, right? All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about comprehensive understanding of effective networking techniques, both in person and online. And what I would like to do also this um, evening is equip all of you with practical strategies to build and maintain meaningful professional relationships. Uh, at any given point in time, you're more than welcome to type in the bit.ly. So it will be bit.ly forward slash capital C capital O underscore uh, capital O for online and then presence with a capital P. Again, Carrie Lane is putting those links inside the chat for your convenience as well. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the power of connections. So some of the things I want to kind of go over and I want to make sure I establish this before anything else is that there's nothing like human interaction 
when it comes to being face to face with someone and being able to communicate. Clearly, we are doing this over Zoom and we've all had different stories, especially um, when it comes to distance teaching, online teaching and whatnot, and when it, keeping cameras on. And of course, that's not the expectation tonight. Uh, but we do know that there is nothing that replaces that one to one. Let's sit down across from each other and read nonverbal cues and communicate and hear tonations and fluctuations and be there in real time. So when it comes to the power of connections, effective networking, whether it's in person or online, the bottom line is this, it's about forming real lasting relationships. And we can start that by finding shared interests, by being authentic about those interests um, and finding ways of connecting those professionally. And today we're gonna dive into a few examples of how to do that and where to do that. I'll be sharing a different platforms such as LinkedIn, Twitter, ISTE, and then some other platforms as well that way you have a variety of it, of, of how to connect and how to build your online presence uh, professionally. But before we get started, I do wanna play this quick video um, where we've all heard the phrase, it's not what you know, but who you know. And I like to start off with just a little bit of, 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 of a, just a quick little sitcom clip here. So let's check this out. Collaboration is key for team success. See if this plays here. Okay, give me one second here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this link over here. And I want you to check this out. Here we go. I want you to take every single assignment I give you seriously and do the very best job you can. Success in life depends on a good education. Not always. I beg your pardon? That's not what my brother says. What does your brother say? My brother says, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> I see. And who does your brother know? Nobody. That's why he doesn't have a job. <laughs> All right, so it is not what you know, but who you know. And sometimes I think as educators, I would have to agree that it is actually, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit about what you do know and also the relationships that you build because when we're talking to people about different things, it goes back to just building something that's meaningful and something that's authentic and powerful. So there are, before we dive into the platforms of what we can use out there to connect with. I, I do want to talk about the top three innovating network tips to propel your career. Um, I did take this um, from a Dr. Fish and Dr. Fish is a, a uh, she leads the T-Mobile education department. And uh, I got a chance to meet her this past summer in Colorado at a conference. And this is one of the things that she brought up. Um, she actually put this together, but she started off by sharing about the first off is you want to start with the shared interest, whatever that case may be in education, whether it be SEL, whether it be esports, whether it be athletics, whether it be ELA, multi-language learners, SEL, UDL, accessibility. We've realized that everyone has their niche, everyone has their subjects, but I like this uh, um, quote from Keith Ferrazzi and the book entitled Never Eat Alone. And you'll find links to all of these books as well in our, our, our links of Bitly with resources. But you wanna start with the shared interest. And, it, and, and Keith Ferrazzi says, the goal of networking is to connect with people who have similar interests and values. However, this is the part where I really enjoy is the more you give, the more you get. So it's an investment. It's when you decide to connect with others, it's what can I give you? And more importantly, even sometimes if you don't think you can give anything, you can give a listening ear, you can give asking questions, you can listen with intention. And we teach our students to do that with collaborative skills that we're doing in the classroom. We can use them as teachers. We can model that when we're talking to people, giving them our full and undivided attention and being there to listen to them. So that's one way when, you come to start, when it comes to a beginning, you wanna start with a shared interest. The next aspect of it is you, you want to be authentic. You don't want to cause a front. You don't want to pretend that you don't know. It's, sometimes it's, I've found it, it's better for you just even to, sometimes the best answer is, you know what, I don't know. Could you tell me more? And, and let that individual at your 
trying to connect with kind of express a little bit more. Um, Steve Jobs said this, he says, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. So be passionate about whatever it is that you like to do. One of the things that I enjoy doing actually, and I've honestly found very few teachers, and the only time I actually connect with them is at the San Diego International Comic Con. And uh, some teachers, I, I find very few teachers that like to use a lot of comic books to integrate within their, their, their um, or pop culture within their lessons or whatnot. There's very few, there's very few here in San Diego as well that um, I've worked with. But when I go to Comic-Con, some of my favorite moments there are actually attending the free educator series and connecting with other educators, hearing from other educators of what they're doing in the classroom. Cause I'm like, hey, I found it. I am in this conference. That's right, I did call Comic-Con a conference, especially the educator series, but I'm learning how pop culture and comic books are being utilized in the classroom. And it, it's, I'm all being authentic about it. And I mean, yeah, sure, I'm a geek, I'll own it, I'll be proud of it, but I love it. And it's something that I enjoy and my students enjoy. And I still get messages from students to this day saying like, I'm the only teacher that actually ever implemented that. And I'm like, that's cool. I mean, I am, they recognize me, they know me for that, but always be your authentic self, love what you do bring your authentic self to the classroom and to your students um, and even to the professional development that you can find. The next one's also very important and it connects and it's a nice segue to kind of put everything together, but you want to follow up. Um, one of my favorite books is um, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by uh, Dale Carnegie. And the link again will also be to that one of those books, to that book specifically will be inside our, our resources. But he says this, he says, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. So sincerely have that interest with other people and things that you can talk about and, and, and things that theme and pique your interest and things that are, are, are gathering when you talk about certain things. Uh, one of the, I, there was a, um, was a morning subscription that I have called Morning Brew and uh, one of the tips that it, 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 it talked about on there is um, being able to have that topic of staying on the current of current events and topics. Now, a lot of things can happen when it comes to current events and everything, but I've, I've often found that the safest current event that you can talk to someone about is typically what's happening in sports. Now, I specifically like baseball. I like football. I'm not a big basketball fan. Um, I don't keep up with even like the U.S. Open when it comes to tennis or golf. And, uh, but what I do know is I know when the championship games are and I just kind of keep an interest and just like, hey, did you see what Phil Mickelson did? And I'm like, I hardly ever watch the guy, but I'll tune in to see what happened. I'll keep up with certain things. And, but if there's certain things that you are passionate about or, when it comes to just different movies that came out over the weekend, the box office hits, that's another topic that you could bring up. Uh, or maybe restaurant week is, yeah, movies are great. Restaurant week is happening next week and all these restaurants. And I remember talking to, I didn't know about restaurant week until somebody brought that up and bring it up like, hey, did you know about restaurant week? Do you know they have this deal? Did you know about this new coffee shop that just opened? Hey, what's your favorite drink? Just little things of talking to people. And you'll find there's, there are communities for every topic that you yourself are interested in. So sports, movies, food, keep it PC. I mean, we don't have to mention other topics that cause controversy because we don't want that. We want to build friendships. We want to be authentic. We want to actually find the interest and build people up. So, and I, I see, yeah, Dr. Gallego says, mentioning movies are good. Food is good. Um, I did want to share a resource really quick. Um, when it comes to, actually, we go back before that. It was a slide that um, I missed. But I also want to talk about just when it comes to building your digital presence and expanding opportunities for educators. So before I share this resource and then talk about specific sites that can support you, um, networking today is not just limited person to person. And we know that with everything that's happened with the online teaching and professional development. Clearly, here we are once a week now for the, the rest of the school year, for the most part, having an event where we're hosting and talking about these types of things digitally. But digital platforms do allow you to grow your network and share your expertise and connection with like-minded professionals across the entire globe. 
across the globe. And, and, and it explores how educators can take their networking efforts to the next level. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to share. Yes. Yeah, somebody mentioned chess games online is my thing to do. And it connects me with other countries. That's beautiful. I mean, we're talking esports even there right there, but yes, it's beautiful to have that connection. And um, I will tell you that because I'm active online, there are two opportunities. Um, one that happened a while back and one that most recently happened. Uh, one happened in 2017. I got invited to be a keynote facilitator for a STEM workshop. And I was just a classroom teacher um, at the time. I wasn't an administrator. I wasn't doing anything special other than just showcasing my work online at the time via Twitter, via LinkedIn, I think Facebook or whatnot. But in 2017, and I got invited to be a keynote and facilitate a conference at Peking University in Beijing, China for an entire week. And they took care of everything. It was one of my uh, experiences that I never thought would have happened. And it only happened because I was just sharing what I was doing in my classroom. And they were looking for a specific per person with a specific niche of different things that they could talk about. So that's the beauty about it, is sharing these things. The other thing that most recently happened, um, and it's actually kind of hot off the press, and that is I actually connected with a gamification company that is trying to build a career pathways for K through 12 education in London. And this happened literally like a week and a half ago. And they found me via social media. And they said like, hey, we hear you're doing all these things with esports, but also with career development. Would you mind just looking at our... We need a professional that can just look um, at our, uh, our our gamification software. And I'm like, sure. So I met with a gamifying like startup in London. I'm like, this is great. Awesome. But again, that is the beauty of being able to share these things online. Now, that leads me to share this next resource with you. And that's from, this is from one of my colleagues, uh, Pam, Pamela Rabin. And when it comes to online and having a cohesive messaging, she presented this a few years ago at Spring Q in Palm Springs. So the PDFs to this slide uh, or her presentation is on there. And it's, it's a beautiful way of going through storytelling and how to tell your story on social media. So um, I'm not going to dive into that. That is her presentation. But I wanted to give you that resource because if you're wondering, well, I know how to tell my story on social media. What can I do now? That's exactly what we're going to dive into. And then also, just on a side note, I'm a big Abbott Elementary fan, all right? So it's one of those uh, television sitcoms where I'm like, I feel seen. I hopefully, if you get a chance to watch it, hopefully you feel seen. Um, also, I understand if you don't watch it because you want to separate work once you get home, I'm totally with you on that as well. I have to be very strategic and I'm going to be authentic. I have to be very strategic when I watch Abbott Elementary because if I don't want to think about work, I will not watch it. But I will say it is one of the funniest shows and... Um, yeah, I think for the most part, you would be encouraged by watching it. Yes, Dr. Butters, uh, Dr. Gay goes, you love Ava. Yeah, everyone loves Ava. She's she's awesome. She's the administrator of the year in my book, or maybe what not to do as an administrator. So, <laughs> all right, let's start off with the, in my personal take, the number one professional website that you can utilize. Uh, and it's maintain its professionality. And there is a, a way of utilizing LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is definitely an, an essential platform for any professional networking, no matter what it is that you do. Even if it's a startup, even if you're a chef, even if you're a social media influencer, it, this is one of the biggest platforms that I've utilized within the last few years. And I've connected with so many educators to the point where I see them at conferences. Uh, it's, it's almost like a reunion. It's like a reunion, like there's no awkwardness or it's like, hey, I'm going to see you. I'm going to meet with you. I've met with different level executives. It's a nice open window to connect with someone. And, and you want to be very authentic. Uh, and you also want to, I would encourage you, when you utilize LinkedIn, be as authentic as possible and really dive into it. Try to avoid a lot of the automated uh, responses because that's when, it, you, I mean, if you use it, add something else to it as well. But um, LinkedIn, I'm going to go ahead and just explain here. Educators can connect with peers. You can share educational insights, engage in discussions around topics, innovation, technology, integration, and equity. Um, one of the things I would encourage you to do, uh, and I did this a lot when I first started teaching, is if you're in the classroom and you're an administrator, if you're connected to them or your district or whatnot, tag them. Because so many times in class, 
when I've had those aha moments, when I've had those breakthrough moments with students that had those epiphanies, and I'm like, man, I wish someone was here to see this. And more oftentimes when someone was there to see it, everything went, it was in shambles. I'm like, that's when the tech didn't work. That's when the student decided to, to go ahead and blurt out what they shouldn't have blurt out, whatever the case is. But the beauty about social media and showcasing is you can showcase your work and you can let your colleagues and your friends and your family and your, your supervisors know like this is what's happening. Um, there's also groups you can join. Uh, there's K uh, through 12 education at Tech Leaders. I'm in several eSport ones, several AI uh, ones. Uh, and it's it's great to connect this uh, with this. And um, there's several countywide leaders, district leaders, national leaders that I've been able to connect with that I have yet to meet in person. But we talk a lot on LinkedIn and it's it's, it's it's beautiful. It's 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 really cool to be able to see that and to build that support system. So, I would encourage you. LinkedIn is probably one of the top ones to join. Now, this next one I'm going to bring up. Take it or leave it. Okay. I, I know there's a lot of controversies, but I will say I'm going to kind of talk about how this used to be, um, back about maybe ten years ago, um, when when it first came out. And this is actually how I connected with a lot of educators. Um, online and actually even some of my colleagues that I currently work with, uh, I, I connected with them on Twitter long before I even got a chance to connect with them online and, and it was an, an ability to show the good work. But many educators use Twitter to participate in real-time conversations. Some of you may remember um, or not, but there was Twitter chats that would happen. There was like an ed tech chat that happened on Sunday nights and then there was certain things like there's a certain like administrative chats that happen on Saturday mornings where you can connect with administrators all over the world. Typically, you kind of connect with them within more of the hemisphere time zones and whatnot. But it's an awesome opportunity to grab feedback and whatnot. Um, and even as a teacher, grab authentic audiences. Uh, I myself had several people from the uh, George Lucas Foundation um, back when I was teaching sixth grade, I had my students, when Star Wars was making its debut during the months of December, my students were writing blog posts. We were watching and we were going over the hero's journey timeline and we watched the original Star Wars. I got parent permission slips and whatnot because it was a PG movie and uh, we watched it and we analyzed Luke Skywalker and the, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm blanking on it, blanking on it, but um, it's, it's the original one that came out. But either way, um, my students wrote their blog pieces and I tagged them on Twitter. I tagged different um, entities and several writers from the George Lucas Foundation went on my students' blogs and were responding on that. So it's again, it's a great way to connect, um, provide authentic audiences, but also a great way to connect with others as well. All right, and moving forward also, there are Facebook groups. I did put a link on the resources specifically to not facebook.com, but it's actually the Facebook educational groups link. So if you use that, and if you use actively use Facebook, but you can join educator focused Facebook groups to share resources, discuss challenges, and you can collaborate with teachers all over the world. Um, there's actually groups, STEAM educators, teachers helping teachers. Um, it provides support and, uh, and inspiration. Um, so <laughs> yes, Dr. Gallegos mentioned that Mark Hamill actually liked her tweet one time, which <laughs> that's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to connect with celebrities um, on there. Uh, but yeah, using social media for that. Uh, Facebook can be something that you can utilize. Um, I'm not going to talk about how you should have your Facebook. Everyone's entitled to it. It's your social media. You can use it how you'd like. Again, the slides from Pam Rabin kind of talk about what your story should be like. Um, you could have two Facebook accounts. You can have a professional one and a personal one. Hey, everyone has that. I, I, I have that for Instagram. So um, that's how I utilize it. I have a professional one and I have my podcasting one. So I'm sorry, my personal one and my podcasting one. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. And this next one, I just signed up for it uh, a few months ago, but this one's really powerful. It's, it's ISTE Connect. So it's kind of like the social media platform specifically for ISTE. Uh, and if you don't know what ISTE is, it is, stands for the International Society for Technology uh, in Education. And it allows all of us to talk all things ed tech. So if you're like, I want to keep it strictly professional only, my personal take would be, hey, keep it with LinkedIn and something like ISTE Connect, and you will be connected and very well versed. Um, it allows uh, different interest groups as well and with like-minded professionals. So whatever it is that you're looking for, um, 
even within our team, we all have our specific niches. Um, I, I specifically like a lot of the esports. Um, I also like a lot of the um, bioengineering, which you'll hear about that in future um, upcoming Curious About. But also you have Carrie Lane, who really enjoys accessibility and UDL and making sure that all students have access to all things, regardless of what circumstances they face in their lives. Uh, and then we have other colleagues of mine uh, that are focused on artificial intelligence and other ones that are doing uh, more of like ed tech for littles or whatever the case may be. But again, even within our department, we have our niches. And if you want to find your niche, you basically can go to ISTE uh, Connect and connect with finding your groups there. So um, again, the link for that also is on the resource. Uh, uh, I made a little um, resource link hyperlink page. Now this one is really interesting. Um, it's it's a professional way of having like a WordPress, but it's one of those where you don't have to really create a website. It's just like a professional. I want to put my article up, and I want to write. I want to reflect. Um, and I would encourage you as an educator to document highs, lows, experiences, whatever the case may be. Um, you see here on the link. Um, one of my former students was doing an internship, excuse me, with MIT uh, during one of their summer, during their junior, uh, uh, their junior year, and uh, he wanted to interview me for having an opportunity of introducing STEM-like opportunities with robotics, 3D printing, computer coding, and whatnot. And he wanted to write an article, and, and that had actually introduced me a few years ago. Actually, you see here, July 30th, 2022, to this platform known as Medium. And I've seen a lot of articles from educators uh, that they'll write on Medium and then they'll post it on like LinkedIn. And there's just a level of, of clarity. There's also a level of how clean the website Medium is to share your thoughts. And then also there's an algorithm that puts your category with others. So it allows you to have that opportunity to have interaction with other articles. So I would encourage you to use Medium as a platform for like blog posts about your experiences. And it's a public portfolio. So it's a way of really creating that public portfolio. Um, but share again, these links, are they, they mesh well, especially on professional websites like uh, a LinkedIn or other mediums as well. But uh, no pun intended. But yeah, check out Medium. Okay, now this one I want to elaborate the next two a little bit more because this takes a little bit more of stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, the first one would be one of the ways of connecting and building your online presence. Again, if you want to write for a big audience, then shoot for a big audience, which would be something like Edutopia. I put the link on here uh, in, the, in the resource page of what it's like to find and, and pitch an article. Um, I am in the process of, of doing this. Um, they provide a lot of feedback um, and a, a lot of fine details. They have their expectations. They have their team of teachers from, from the Northern California area. And you'll see this is actually also part of the George Lucas Foundation. So if you didn't know that uh, George Lucas, I know I feel like this is almost a Star Wars um, curious about session, but he actually, they started the Edutopia Foundation. But it is a widely accessible K through 12 educational topics, and they talk about everything and anything from what you thought of an education, from first year teaching woes to administrative conversations to um, even just some of the challenges that we face when it comes to just different climates that we might be involved in or things happening across. They address that, and you hear experiences from other teachers. And the nice thing is, it's not necessarily peer reviewed, but it is. It is uh, reviewed by several of, 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 of contracted teachers that are actual professional writers as well. But this is a great way of building up your network and having people find you uh, and, and showcasing the work that you're doing. So um, it's, I would encourage you, pitch an idea and, 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 and just kind of, if you have a specific specialty, this is where you want to showcase this. And I'm just gonna give you some ideas right now, like the ideas of like pop culture and esports. There's not that many articles on there about that. So if that is something that you're passionate about, dive into that and and, and try to think of like what is it that you're doing. And and again, it's just a pitch. 
And I've talked to several of my colleagues. For some reason, if you don't get that Edutopia connection, well, still publish your article on Medium or you could publish it on officially like LinkedIn articles as well. So it, again, that's another way of being able to be recognized and being um, just showcasing the, the good knowledge that you have. And I will also encourage you and say this, I have the opportunity of teaching students that are getting their credential and I do a technology class with them. And um, I ask them every now and then, and I, I, I was experienced this also in my credentialing um, program, but there, when it comes to behavior management, especially your first year teaching, uh, I know a lot of those experiences come from student teaching, but there are a lot of you that have a lot of years of wisdom. And if you were to share those experiences, like, hey, here's my advice to first year teachers. And if we had several educators writing like that, the resources would be enormous and teachers would find, oh, I like that style. Oh, I like that style. No, I like that style. And you've given a manual to better education. So again, that's a good way of building your presence. All right, this next one again is going to be way uh, another one when it comes to stepping out of your comfort zone. And there's two ways to go about it, okay? One is, uh, first off, if you have a podcast that you listen to, um, great. I would email that host and say like, hey, are there any topics that you're looking for? Um, this is what I, I am very passionate about this. So, and the reason why I say you're putting yourself out there, it's like Edutopia, you're making a pitch. You may get them to be like, oh, that's great. Yeah, I'd love to interview. And they'll, you might have a preliminary interview and they might give you questions and have you answer them via writing and then they respond back and, or, uh, and that's a way of doing that, connecting with your podcast hosts and, and, and talking to them. Or just even a good way to start is, hey, I'm going to just want to chat with them. Podcast hosts love that. Like, hey, I really loved your episode when you talked about this. You might, can we say like 15, 20 minutes? I just want to pick your brain a little bit. And then you're building that relationship with them uh, to talk and to share. Um, however, I also put a link on the resources. Um, it's very easy to make a podcast now because all you need is uh, one of the um, the free versions of doing that and, and is utilizing something like a Spotify for podcasters. You can create your art on Canva. I feel like that's another curious about. And as long as you have analog headphones, like the ones I'm currently presenting with tonight, you could have a very nice podcast. And now with the integration of AI, the equalizations and all those technical sometimes that scare people, like I don't know how to mix and all that. It's very feasible to make a podcast now. So if 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 you want to have, if 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 you've been in conversations and I've been part of planning sessions and professional developments and ILT meetings where I'm like, wow, we had some very powerful conversations. This almost felt like a podcast episode. Then I think you should be making that. If you've ever had a conversation with someone and you're like, I wish this was a podcast episode, then consider that your sign that you should probably be starting one or at least be reaching out to certain podcast hosts or categories of being able to be interviewed or have a conversation with them about it. But another way of it is it's just to promote your podcast and episodes. Um, it's great to have um, to showcase what's going on. There's a lot of resources out there. I personally have my own that I've enjoyed doing. And I myself give my, I started off with uh, the expectation, one episode a week. And then I was like, ah, I'm going to do one episode a month. And now with so much happening, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough if I do like one episode every quarter which is totally fine. I just like having those archived episodes that are on there and going back and then listening to it. And, and, and you eventually find out how much you've evolved as an educator um, when it comes to that as well. So that, those are the top seven um, ways of building your online presence. Take what you like, leave behind what you don't, because I know there's some convictions on certain um, social media platforms, which I totally honor and respect. And, uh, and whatnot. Uh, but again, I do want to kind of, um, before we move forward I, and share with the calendar, I do want to go over this from another uh, quote from Dale, uh, Dale Carnegie. And that is networking is, is more than just exchanging business cards or shaking hands. It's about creating meaningful connections with people who share your goals and values. And um, 
I, I would definitely encourage all of you to just, yeah, like reach out to people, step out. And Dr. Gallegos actually brought this up. Yeah, I actually reached out to uh, Pamela Rabin back, I believe, in 2019. Um, and I was uh, at the innovation station in Chula Vista. And I actually said like, hey, it was during the summer too. So I, had, I was on summer break. I said, hey, can I go record your ed tech team and just kind of talk all things ed tech and uh, learned a lot about how they fell in love with technology and the first infusions of technology. And it's one of my favorite episodes. Um, then uh, we were all in, in one, it was, I had a small little setup. I still have it with a small little blue microphone. And um, I, it was, it was cool. So uh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's a way I, I never did it for the intention of, like, I mean, it was, I guess it was networking, but it was, it was more like, I want to learn. I did it more with the intention of like, I want to learn how to mix. I want to learn how to do the nuances of podcasting and whatnot. Um, I'm really into music as well. So <laughs> I really wanted to master the intro and outro music. So just, the, that's just the way I like to do things again. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, do I have, um, before I close out, um, do I have any questions so far? Um, regarding any of the topics that we just talked about. Um, you can put it in the chat. You can also unmute yourself. And I'm going to put where I can see the videos if you want to raise your hand. I mean, you can. Unfortunately, all right, there we go. If anyone can uh, go ahead and just put in the chat, like what social media platform um, do you enjoy using? Um, it can be anything. And I mean, we can also, I, I also want to, I, I want to address if you use Pinterest, if you use Instagram, um, YouTube is another one. Instagram. Okay. And it's just kind of a consensus to see what kind of platform. This is also a good way of, if you were looking to build your online presence. So if you kind of put down on here, um, Hey, Mr. Hood, good to see you here. Uh, Medium is actually, it's not a paid subscription. Uh, I don't believe it is. Um, I think for some articles, some people make their money that way, but for the most part, um, you don't have to. Like you pay to see other articles, for the most part. Yeah, Instagram does seem it is a little easier to manage, especially with the lives or the videos and whatnot. Uh, hey, Heather, good to see you. Uh, yeah, YouTube and Instagram, those are great, especially when it comes to creating school news videos. Yeah, for YouTube and for students, that that is huge. Yes, Mr. Hood, he's one of our teachers from Compton. And actually, yes, we connected with him because of a social media post on LinkedIn announcing the esports tournament that he was doing. And I reached out to his school district. And uh, from there, that's how we got connected. So there, that's a great even power of social media networking and connections right there. And actually, because of all of that, Mr. Hood actually spoke at our Innovation and Learning Summit over esports. And it was all because of a LinkedIn post. That was it. Uh, Brad, you put also on here AI and ed tech resources on TikTok. TikTok is, it's, it's a good one. Um, yes. And I think also as ed tech, it's important to kind of stay at least in the know. You don't have to necessarily have to endorse, but at least know. I mean, these are also the apps that our students are using. So it's, it's interesting. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I had an opportunity. To, Heather works with uh, Rel Mislan there at Feaster Charter, and I interviewed him for one of my podcasts. And it, it's it's great to be able to talk and share ideas and whatnot. Can I just add something, Chris? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've really noticed about social media, and I'm I'm one of those people. I feel like I'm I'm very gregarious in person but not so much online. And it's really something I have to push myself towards. But when you are surrounded, you're surrounding yourself with people who um, are really good at it. For instance, we work with Chris and he's, he's kind of training us on how to be better in social media. He's doing that with Carrie and it's really helping us branch out and meet more people. And, um, Again, that's how we met Mr. Hood. He invited us up. We were on the day at his school, Compton. And um, we found out that his school is, Mr. Hood is at number 40 in California. 
And it's one of the best schools in all California. And we would not have known that if it weren't for social media and had the opportunity to visit. And I think that's, yeah, it's 40th in California, something like number 300 in, in the all United, States. United States. Yeah. yeah. And those are things that you find out by making these connections. And so it's really a great thing to do. We've learned so much from Mr. Hood and what he's doing. And um, I find that people really want to connect. And so it's a really great, great thing to be able to do. Oh, it's number 86. And yeah, it all of this information we would have never have known if Chris didn't reach out on LinkedIn. Yeah. And it's, yeah, so it all started with LinkedIn. I saw a post, it caught my attention and I reached out to the ed tech coordinator for Compton Unified and the rest is history. And and here we are. So that is so cool. Yeah. And even then we've, it's, 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 it's beautiful to be able to connect that way. Um, there's other success stories that I've heard uh, via um, utilizing social media. But again, I think more than anything, we all have to step out of our comfort zones to a certain level and being willing to be like, okay, I want to share. Like I, I'm encouraging my colleague, Carrie Lane. She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to not only ed tech, but ed tech accessibility. And there are certain things that she does. And I'm like, I, the world needs to know this. And I, right, please. I'm like, and she's also like, you know, she studied journalism and whatnot. So I'm like, you, you need to, you need to go and put that to, uh, I mean, her last name is Lane, so you go figure. But you need to put that to practice, all right? And I'm making a reference again to my comic book nerds kicking in Lane, Lois Lane, but no relation at all. But either way, uh, of sharing those kinds of things. And you can do that. Uh, and again, you can utilize that, whether that be just a LinkedIn article or a LinkedIn post or uh, whether it be Medium, but showcasing that. Or if you're not the type where I don't want to type, I want to talk. Some of you brought up Instagram. Do that as well, like utilize that. And there's all these different filters and automated edits that you can do now on with artificial intelligence um, that allows you to just have a nice production out there. So um, yeah, uh, Garrick Frey Curiosity Stream on YouTube. That's awesome. I kind of want a little bit more about that. So if you have a link, Mr. Frey, that'd be great. Um, other than that, any questions so far? Um, I will say again, next week we do have our esports meeting. So if you like video gaming, um, or if you want to learn more about esports and CIF competitions, um, I will say right now that we are in the middle of an international Mario Kart competition. I'm the esports coach for Monarch, and we're doing that. So if you like Mario Kart and you just, it's open to all ages, just as a heads up. So if you have, if you're even an elementary school teacher, third and fourth grade, and you're like, oh, Mario Kart in the classroom, you can actually participate in this tournament going on and the yeah so let me know Chris um, can I interject for one second as well absolutely I just want to share so Chris mentioned he's been mentoring me a lot and I think that for me I'm not generally someone who does use social media a lot since I've been working with Chris I think that my social media presence has really you know, manifested in a huge way. But I think the main thing that he's helped me to see is that it's really about the work that you're doing and being proud to showcase it. So there is that element of like getting to know people, but it's also getting to know people because you're doing what you care about and what you love and showcasing, you know, the great things that we're doing for students to help continue the work. And so for me, that's been a really big thing that's helped me to reach out and do all of these things that are out of my comfort zone, remembering the purpose behind it and like all the good that you can do by making these connections. So. I completely agree with that. And um, yeah, I, I remember even, uh, I actually reached out to their news, lo our local newspaper or uh, one of them, um, Sign on San Diego uh, to come to a special on so a lot of the work that Carrie was doing. Um, when it came to accessibility and researching for um, some of our students at our friendship school. So in uh, our friendship school for students for the students that are medically fragile and whatnot. All in all, be authentic, champion each other, lift each other up. I mean, and that's the best way to really pick up a lot of these networks and whatnot. Um, and speaking of more networks, again, 
back to basics Google Classroom. Just come hang out if you want to learn more. Um, Wednesday, October 16th, I can't emphasize enough um, the cool things that Carrie is doing with accessibility, but empowering inclusive learning, leverage edtech to meet UDL 3.0 guidelines. And then, of course, the power of quantum computing and AI and EDU. I mean, if you've seen the movie Inception, well, maybe it might be happening. Maybe we might be living in it right now as well. But either way, um, I want to thank everyone for their time of being here this evening. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Carrie, if you don't mind just dropping that link one more time for the resources. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, be done about 15 minutes early. All right, everyone. We'll have a good evening. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Thank you, Heather.